welcome to a spooky house. Ooh. Super spooky. A super spooky house. Um, it's a musical collection, uh, a musical history of the scary stories told about this house. Um, this musical in its entirety is not meant to offend any ghosts or humans or spirit, spiritual beings. So, enjoy. Woo! 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 The year is 1987. <laughs> William Corcoran is eyeing a house in the small town East Stoneham, Maine. He stumbles upon one, and it seems interesting. Super spooky house. Super spooky house. A big yellow house in the middle of the woods. Super spooky house. Super spooky house. If the realtor says a price, it better be good. <laughs> We just bought the house, the super spooky house. Going to the house, we can bring the whole gang. Walking through the house, quiet as a mouse. No one is around, and then it goes bang! It's just Uncle Mike, he gave us quite the fright. Set the precedent for many years to come. Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Howard will haunt our dreams forever. Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Howard. I won't go upstairs if I'm by myself. <laughs> we now bring you to fall 1997, where Jack Galvin is seven years old and he's on a walk through the woods with his cousins. They stumble upon a broken down house that seems mysterious. In a path in the woods where I walk with my cousins to the house in the woods that was there till it wasn't in the house in the woods down the path lived a lady if you've heard all the stories then you know that she's crazy she did that she did this she eats rats she eats kids she eats kids she eats kids i'm a kid you're, you're a kid, kid. She, she eats kids she eats kids <laughs> doesn't matter if you try to stop it she eats kids, she eats kids, she'll eat you if you don't watch it! <laughs> Why do you want to eat me, Mrs. Howard? These stories turn me into such a coward. I'm 29 years old and I won't go upstairs alone. Am I going to be this way forever? Is he going to be this way forever? Why am I so misunderstood? You eat one child and you're labeled for good. Cancel culture will be my demise. I ate one child and I can't get by. Everyone's scared. I hear how they talk. When I go by my house, they run. They don't walk. At job interviews, they turn me away. I'm a social pariah. They've cast me astray. All because I ate little Timmy. It wouldn't have happened if he had been skinny, but he was so... But he was so plump, so filled with blubber, so I sprinkled some garlic and rubbed him with butter. I preheated the oven to 455. I cracked some black pepper and I cut up some whoa, chocolate. Whoa, 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 Children, children, you can see that I didn't do it on purpose. Come here, little kids. You shouldn't be nervous. It wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. Timmy was basically asking for it. It wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. He shouldn't have looked so yummy. Now we bring you to summer 2003, and Marty Corcoran is home alone with her one-year-old daughter, Mary. Little does she know, things are about to get spooky. <laughs> summer 2003, spooky things about to happen. Marty, here's a baby, but Mary, she just napping. Man, what the heck is going on in here? I could have sworn I just heard a baby, but Mary's right there, and she's sound asleep. Oh man, am I going crazy? <laughs> So she does some push-ups to calm herself down, some sit-ups just to relax. On squat 67, she hears some more crying. What the heck is that? Yo, Mary, are you crying? And I ain't crying. Can you see I'm asleep? Well, you're the only baby, and I hear a baby crying. Well, I ain't made a peep. Hmm, that's weird. 
Better go do some box fit classes. Box fit! Let's take your mind off the ghost! Box fit! We'll explain the unknown! Box fit! When your mind's on the fence! Box fit! When nothing makes sense! <laughs> Later on in that same week in 2003, some more things were afoot. Hillary is tossing and turning in bed. Her mattress is so hard, it feels like lead. When suddenly a figure appears at her bed. Is that you, Jane? <laughs> no, I've come from the dead. Hillary <laughs> wonders if this is a dream or if it's a part of the kid's pranking scheme. How do I know this isn't a lie? I'll prove I'm a ghost. Look, I can prove it. No, whoa, whoa. I don't want to. I told you I didn't want to do this one. We're in the middle of a show. We're in the middle of a show. Do you see all the Do you want to sleep in that room? Okay, fine. Which one do you want to do? What do you want to do? Can we just do the Undertaker? All right, fine. Okay. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Once upon a time, not long ago, the farm was the town's funeral home. The Undertaker oversaw all the processions. And he was a man of many possessions. Possessions, possessions being dead, dead bodies! <laughs> Underneath the house, he hid bodies by the dozen. He'll get you and all of your cousins. The Undertaker lives out back by the well. The Undertaker pees in the water. It's Undertaker pee that you drink from the sink. It's Undertaker pee in the shower. Why do you think that my hair is so soft? Because pee is a natural conditioner. The Undertaker killed my sister last month. Oh, I barely think you'll miss her. <laughs> so we lose a couple kids every once in a while, but the tap water is oh so refreshing. Because the Undertaker takes but the Undertaker gives. He's a curse and an Undertaker blessing. Because the Undertaker lives out back by the well. The Undertaker pees in the water. But our hair is soft and our thirst is quenched. So, so here, take, 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 take our, our daughter. What? This is so annoying. I don't even think these stories are real. Josie, like none of these stories are real. They could be. <laughs> but the, the Undertaker, Undertaker lives out back by the well. The Undertaker pees in our water. Everybody now. The Undertaker lives out back by the well. The Undertaker pees in our water. <laughs>